what's up? In this video, I'm gonna show you three different ways to make incredibly delicious focaccia all using the same dough. We're gonna make this the quick and dirty way, we're gonna make it the slightly more professional and more delicious way, and then we're gonna take that focaccia and add a bunch of cheese to it just to see what happens. All three of these are very easy and very delicious, and all you need is a cast iron pan in a very hot oven. First up is the quick and dirty way. This method is gonna get you crispy, oily, fluffy focaccia in about two hours start to finish. So in a medium stainless steel bowl measure, 360 grams of water, that's 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius, four grams of instant yeast, 25 grams of olive oil, 10 grams of sugar, 450 grams of bread flour, mine's about 12 and percent protein, and finally 12 grams of salt. Now with a sturdy spoon, I'm gonna stir everything up to combine. This method of mixing is called a straight dough. And that means that none of the flour is getting fermented ahead of time. So no poolish or sour dough starter. And it also means that the salt and the yeast are going to get mixed in right at the beginning with everything else. Once that's all stirred up, I'm going to come back with a wet hand to finish off this mix. This dough's got a lot of water in it. It's about 82% hydration, aka the ratio of flour to water. And that means that it's going to be a sticky dough. The wet hand is going to keep all of that dough off of you. And there we go, mixed dough. It's shaggy and it's a wet mess, but everything's combined and that's all that matters at this stage. The lid's going to go on for 15 minutes and 15 minutes later, we're gonna come back and do our only strength building fold. For that, I'm gonna grab a grip of this dough and pull it out as far as it will let me and then flip it over to the opposite side. I'm gonna do that four to five times, then I'm gonna switch over to a slap and fold technique and round this into a nice taut ball. After we tuck and turn this probably 12 or 15 times, we're gonna have a nice stretch skin on the outside of this dough ball. And now we're gonna grab a 12 inch cast iron pan. Smaller will work if you don't have a big in like this one, the bread is just gonna be a little bit taller. And I'm gonna liberally oil this cast iron pan with about a quarter cup of olive oil. Then I'm going to grab the dough we just folded and move it over into that cast iron and then oil the top of that. From there, I'm going to use my fingertips to dimple and push this ball into a flatter pancake looking thing to fill out the bottom of this pan. Now I'm going to cover this with a lid. In this case, it's the lid from my Dutch oven that fits perfectly, but whatever you got will work. And now we're going to check back in 45 minutes. 45 minutes later, the dough has risen a little bit and it's fully relaxed. More poking and spreading now. I'm going to use my fingertips to push this out towards the edge. I like to push straight down into the dough to get nice deep dimples. The lid's gonna go back on. We're gonna check back in 45 minutes. After that 45 minutes, roughly 105 minutes since we've mixed this dough, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, 260 C. And now let's take a look at the focaccia. It looks great. It's gassy, buoyant, alive, all of the things that we look for in a nice active dough. So I'm gonna grab some Malden salt to finish this thing off. For beautiful focaccia, we need huge crunchy flakes of salt. But if you can't find Malden or something like it, a little coarse kosher salt or whatever you got will do in a pinch. Once that's generously salted, we're gonna load this into the oven and bake it for 15 to 18 minutes. One of the major differences between the easy way and the best way that we're about to see in a minute is the color and flavor of the crust. The short fermentation time here doesn't break down enough of the complex carbohydrates or sugars in the dough. So the crust is overall just less caramelized and a little bit less flavorful. After 15 minutes, we're gonna pull this out of the oven and quick disclaimer, use a well-seasoned cast iron if you've got one. I really neglected the pan that I used for this first dough, as you can see on the slightly rusted outside. I know I'm a total poser, super embarrassed, but it did make getting this less fermented dough out of the pan kind of a chore, so just beware. But take a look, for two hour bread, there is plenty to love about this focaccia. Yes, it's a little short on flavor and maybe the color of the crust is not as deep as you like, but if you're having people over for dinner and you want a big pan of chewy yeastiness for people to tear and wipe through delicious sauce, you can't do much better for less work. Okay, this looks great, but let's take it to the next level. The more pro version is gonna add more fermentation time and a few more simple steps to get what I would consider is the best focaccia I've ever eaten. Same deal, into a medium bowl goes 360 grams of water, 10 grams of sugar, 25 grams of olive oil, and 450 grams of bread flour. You'll notice that the yeast and salt are not in there yet. We're gonna mix that in just a second. What we're doing right now is called an auto lease. As a reminder, auto lease is when we combine the flour and water without the salt and leavener ahead of time to boost the extensibility of the dough and improve the overall texture of the final bread. Bigger holes usually come with auto lees as well. Once this is mixed with a spoon, I'm gonna finish mixing with my wet hand just like we did before. This dough is gonna be even stickier than dough number one, so just be prepared. Once everything's combined, lid goes on. We're gonna let that rise for about 30 minutes. We'll check back then. 30 minutes later, we're gonna finish this mix. I'm gonna add in 20 grams of water. This is gonna help dissolve the salt and yeast, then four grams of yeast and 12 grams of salt. This mix is a simple process of just getting that salt and yeast evenly distributed throughout the dough. A wet hand is the best method for keeping this stuff in the bowl and off your hands. And if you're wondering, hey, Bri, doesn't salt kill yeast? Why did you put the salt? 
on top of that yeast, bro. You're right, salt will kill yeast if you just let it sit on top of it for too long. But since we're mixing this right away, it's really no big sweat. Once that's all combined, the lid's gonna go on and now we're gonna ferment this here on the counter for 30 minutes. After that 30 minutes, it's time to do a strength building fold. Exactly like we always do. We're gonna pull the dough out taut, fold it over to the other side of the bowl and then repeat that four to five times. Then I'm gonna round it into a nice tight ball, slap and fold it, roundy, roundy. There we go, the lid goes back on, 30 more minutes. After that 30 minutes, a second strength building fold is gonna take place. Same as before, but you will notice the dough is looking a little bit more mature and just a little bit stronger and even a little bit shiny from all the tension from fold one. This little bit of added strength is gonna translate into a taller, more open crumb bread later on, but it's also gonna give us a nicer chew than loaf number one. It's gonna be less brittle and have a little bit more heft to it. And that looks good, the lid's gonna go on and now we're gonna load this focaccia dough into the fridge and let it ferment slowly over Overnight. The next day, or about 24 hours later, but at any point, say four hours after it went into the fridge, we're gonna pull this dough out. Take a look, we've gotten a decent amount of additional rise in the fridge overnight, but we've also added a lot more slow rise flavor to the dough, and that added time is gonna reward us with a much deeper flavor and texture. Now I'm gonna load this dough into a 12 inch cast iron. This is my second one, this is my more everyday driver when it comes to cast iron, and as you can see, it's well seasoned. It's not like that rust doggy from episode one. I'll link to this pan in the description because I really love it like it. Now to get this pan ready for baking, we need olive oil. <laughs> Just like round one, about a quarter cup. Now using this dough scraper, I'm gonna flip this dough into my cast iron like this, and then I'm gonna push this out and stretch it towards the edges. Make sure you get your fingertips nice and oily to prevent stickage. And once this dough is stretched out to about 10 inches, the lid's gonna go on and we're gonna check back in one hour and 15 minutes. After that hour 15, things are getting a little bit gassy. The dough has roughly doubled and we're gonna hit the top with a few generous glugs of olive oil and give it another round of dimpling to lightly perforate the dough. With all this docking move, the focaccia would be a lot taller and kind of rounded on top like a regular loaf of bread and our crust to crumb ratio would be all out of whack. It would just be weird. Okay, the lid's gonna go back on and we're gonna check back in one hour. About 20 minutes before that hour is up, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 degrees Celsius one more time and now let's take a look at the bread. Wow, very gassy, very buoyant, and look how it shakes. Again, I'm gonna liberally salt the top of this with tons of flaky salt. Now would also be a good time if you're feeling kind of freaky to add fresh rosemary or chili flakes or maybe some nice oregano. Once that's salted, we're gonna load this into our preheated oven and bake it for 15 to 18 minutes. And like I said, the overnight fermentation here is gonna give us a much more flavorful bread overall, especially when we look at that fried oily bottom in just a second. The color is just gonna be totally Insane. Once the top of the bread is really well caramelized and the bottom is sizzling and bubbling and you can hear it kind of frying under there, it's time to pull this thing out. And I really recommend throwing caution to the wind here, you guys, and baking this thing super dark. You will not regret it. Now cool this thing properly so we don't steam off that crispy fried bottom. We're gonna slide this onto a wire rack and take a look at that bottom. Oh my lord. This is insane. It's buttery, it's oily, it's salty, it's fried. And oh yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and brush the outside of this bread with some of that olive oil from the pan to get it shiny. I mean, the look of this bread tells the entire story. Any human who is hungry will identify this as the most delicious thing in the room as soon as they see it. The inside is squishy but chewy and the crumb is nice and open. It's perfect for sandwiches or dipping it into spreads or just eating it as is. It tastes like a combination of like a donut, a not sweet donut, and popcorn, like buttered popcorn. So toasty, just listen. This is delicious, but we're gonna take it to the next level by making it cheesy. To do that, I've got about six ounces or 175 grams of aged white cheddar. This is Prairie Breeze, also known in my house as Lauren's Ultimate Snacking Cheese, and it's a great cheese, and use it if you can get it, but if you can't, any salty aged cheese will work. Shout out to Union Loafers for cheesy bread. This is an homage to what they make. Google that bread, Google them, you won't regret it. Now, I'm cutting this cheese into roughly half inch size pieces. You can go bigger or smaller depending on how much cheese you wanna bite into. Now, I've got some dough here that was mixed just like focaccia number two, meaning that the yeast and salt were left out at the beginning. We let it auto for 30 minutes, and then after that, we added the salt and yeast. We folded it once, fermented it again, and now we're gonna add the cheese in at this point. To do that, I'm gonna sprinkle in about 25% of that 175 grams of cheese at a time, and then do a fold. In goes another 25%. 
percent do a fold and just repeat that roughly four times until the cheese is layered into the dough to finish building strength into this dough we're going to do another grip and flip to round this dough into a nice taut little cheese ball and that looks good this cheese should be pretty well distributed throughout this dough at this point and this is going to ferment now just like the second focaccia and from here on out the process is exactly the same we're going to flip this into a 12 inch oiled cast iron pan the next day we're going to poke it cover it for about an hour and 15 minutes oil the top generously and then poke it again we're going to cover it for another hour and then right before we bake it at 500 degrees i'm going to top this with some fried panko breadcrumbs check out the description for a quick recipe for fried breadcrumbs by the way once that's breadcrumbed we're going to throw this into the oven and bake it for 15 to 18 minutes again bake it dark if you guys want cool tasting bread and after that 15 to 18 minutes when it's well caramelized and crisp and golden brown we're going to pull it out throw it on a wire rack to cool down and take a look at this thing I think I've said wow a lot in these videos and I don't wanna wear you guys out on the hyperbole of it all, but you guys, look at this thing. It's big, it's fluffy, it's tender, it's so salty and cheesy. I mean, the bread is filled with aged white cheddar. I think you get it. The bottom line is whether you've got two hours or 24 hours and a little bit of cheese, focaccia is just such an easy win. It's a really great thing to have in your tool belt. Let's eat this thing. Before I get out of here, huge thank you to everybody who supports this channel on Ko-fi. And if you like this video, please give it a like, hit subscribe, and if you like these videos, there's a couple more over here for you to check out. As always, guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around to the end, and we'll see you next time.